So the Pac West will expand to 14 institutions, and um, it's kind of funny because the the conference I came from in Pennsylvania had 14 institutions for years and years until about the year after I left, and they added two more schools. So uh, it's a gr- the conference has grown tremendously. It was seven schools when I joined, and it's uh, doubled in the, in those last six years. You want me to go ahead and uh, grab yep. Gary real quick? Yeah, let's get Gary on. Gary Pine, the yeah, go ahead, dial him up. He's waiting patiently. The uh, he's the director of athletics at Azusa Pacific. He's been the AD, I think, for about a year. He actually has a background as being a sports information director for years at uh, Azusa Pacific, and um, all took right, over the AD role last year. So, why don't we dial dial him up, and I'll uh, let me know, and I'll banter some more. Hang uh, tight, and I'll be right with you. Okay, all right, That's good. All right, as we go ahead and get uh, Gary Pine on the phone here, we've got Tom out there uh, in Missouri doing his thing. And we're going to go ahead and connect them together as soon as we get Gary on the phone. So let's see if we can't get Gary here. Mm-mm-mm. Athletics with Susan. Yes, Susan. Uh, may I have uh, Gary Pine, please? Just a moment, please. Thank you. Tom, Gary's coming to the phone, and you are live. Gary, welcome to the program. Oh, he's coming. Okay. He's I thought he was there. But <clears throat> <laughs> <laughs> live radio that. for you. Live internet radio <laughs> for you. <laughs> it's always great. Did you get that air conditioning fixed in the studio, Joe? Yes, sir. Good. I know it's going to be a scorcher there. The pilot said it was going to be like 113. It's 112.4 as we speak with oh, several man. hours to still keep heating up. Wow. Hello. Uh, Gary, welcome to the program. Well, thank you. Nice uh, to be Gary here. Pine, the, the athletic director at Azusa Pacific University. And, and uh, Gary, I know that it's an exciting time for Azusa Pacific University joining Very the Pacific West simple. Conference. Uh, your school will be playing a full conference schedule this coming year, along with uh, three other institutions um, that have moved from the NAIA to, to that are moving from NAIA to Division Two. For the fans of the Pac West, let's talk a little bit about Azusa Pacific as an institution. Sure. Can you tell us about the institution and what it's like? Sure, Azusa Pacific is a um, Christian liberal arts university located. Well, we say I think about forty miles. Northeast, mostly east, but a little north of downtown Los Angeles. But I tell people it's uh, we're about 15 miles east of Pasadena. When you watch the Rose Bowl and you see the stealth bomber fly over the mountains and come across the Rose Bowl, uh, just take those mountains and draw a straight line about 15 miles east, and you'll run into Azusa Pacific. We can see the stealth bomber fly over Pasadena, uh, where Azusa Pacific is. But we were founded in 1899, so we're what would that be, about 115 years old, if I'm 113 years old, uh, university, um, have been in this location here in the city of Azusa in the San Gabriel Valley. We've been here since the mid-1950s. And in 1965, we organized our athletic program. We'd had an athletic program before, but it became under the governance of the NAI in 1965, and we have been a member of the NAI for over 40 years um, until this uh, until now. In fact, uh, June 1st, uh, we uh, released our NEI membership and um, are an NCAA Division II candidacy year two member. Uh, we're not an active member, but we're a provisional member, and but very excited, as you said, but very excited about going into the NCAA. In fact, one of my coaches was just here in our office about 15 minutes ago. And his exact quote was, he goes, I can't wait to compete in the Pac West. I'm so happy we're Division Two, And that's been really a general feeling across all of our uh, all of our coaches. We're all very excited to be going in C2A and competing in Division Two. Well, what prompted the move to Division Two from the NAIA for your, for your institution? You know, for us, and, and I learned as we went through this process that this decision is different for every school. Uh, I'll, be, I'll be honest here. We had hoped to be able to move as a block of schools and as a conference. we were, our, our former conference, the Golden State Athletic Conference in the NAI, is a, was a marvelous conference. And there was talk and hope that maybe we could move as an entire conference. Uh, that became fairly clear quickly that that wasn't going to be a possibility. Uh, just because each school had different uh, challenges, different reasons, um, 
and different philosophies. And so uh, it became kind of an individual thing, and we had to look at ourselves and say, okay, is this the right move for us? And, I, and I've said all along, it was kind of a five-prong test or five-prong reason for us, and in no particular order. But certainly the brand identity of NCA um, was, was attractive, and we've already seen the fruits of that brand identity. Uh, second was we were spending an awful lot of money on postseason competition in NEI. You know, in the NC2A, uh, you're reimbursed for postseason competition. We will spend um, several hundred thousands of dollars uh, this year in competing in NEI championship events, and it, it gets pretty costly uh, from that standpoint. Uh, secondly, was scheduling in a home for football. Um, our football program was traveling all over the country trying to put together a 10-game schedule. We were an independent in NAI. Uh, we'll now have a conference home. It's in the GNAC, the Great Northwest Athletic Conference, but all of our games will be not only west of the Rockies, they'll be real, almost, uh, they're all west of St. George, Utah, which is really nice, and, and we got a schedule put together right away. We we have a 10-game conference schedule and just one non-conference game. We'll be playing UC Davis. So scheduling was uh, an important thing in a home for football. Then overall scheduling for everybody else in our in uh, our sports, for basketball, softball, um, and uh, volleyball, and those, those team sports. We were having a hard time putting together schedules outside of them. So we wanted to – our those teams were flying all over the country as well, so it was nice to be able to find a home for them. And then um, – uh, the final reason was, to be honest with you, the level of competition. Um, we wanted to challenge ourselves. We uh, had won a lot of Directors' Cups in the NAI, and we thought it was time to raise the bar and uh, challenge ourselves and and see what we could do in Division Two from a competitive standpoint. Um, to be honest with you, we would go to NAI National Championship events where we would find and play against our fellow conference members, and we realized that, the conference was probably stronger than than everyone else was nationally, and that that was uh, really one of the driving forces. We wanted to, to raise the bar and challenge ourselves competitively because uh, it was really the GSAC was was the best of the best in the NAI. The, the when, when you're looking at uh, talk, let's talk a little bit about the uh, Learfield Sports Directors Cup. Yeah, Grand Canyon yeah. won it this year for Division Two. You guys yeah, won it again for the. Yeah. For the NAI, kind of highly unusual because of the circumstances, having two schools affiliated with each other within a conference to to do that. But you guys have won it a number of years in a row, and explain to people what that is, because obviously you've you've, you've sort of dominated, and other schools in in the in the NAI conference that you were in dominated. So it yeah. gives credence to what you're talking about, challenging your your student sure. athletes. Well, first let me say I'm so excited about Grand Canyon, so happy for Keith Baker and his coaches over there, and they're just doing some great things over at Grand Canyon. And I think it's really cool that we'll be the Pac West will be the first conference to have two reigning Directors Cup champions uh, at the same time. That's never happened in uh, I think it's about 18 years of of history of Directors Cup. Real quickly, let me explain what the Directors Cup program is, and I I tell everyone it's really the Heisman trophy of overall athletics. It just doesn't have the hype of it yet, but I, I think in time it will. But it measures the overall success of an athletic program. And, um, and in truth, that's what we want. We want the, the cross-country runner to be just as important as a starting quarterback, just as important as the tennis player and the sprinter on the track team and the center on the basketball team. That Every student athlete that comes to, to a Grand Canyon, a Zoo Pacific, a Hawaii Hilo, a a uh, Dixie State, whoever it may be, that they're just as important as any other athlete and that they have an opportunity to compete for a championship event. Um, the Director's Cup measures points. You're, you're awarded points based on how far your particular team advances in its respective postseason playoff. For instance, our women's track and field team won the NAI Indoor Track and Field Championship. We got 100 points for that championship. The second-place team got 90 points. The third-place team got 80 points. Um, and so you collect points over your different sports. In the NAI, you get to count your six best women's and your six best men's. I think in Division Two it might be seven and seven. And you add up the points, and, you know, whoever has the most points in the year wins the Director's Cup. And we've we've won the Director's Cup the past eight years in a row. That's unprecedented wow. in NAI history. And um, and it's, it's something we're extremely proud of because – 
it shows that we're having a broad-based program, that we're not just a great track school, but we are also a very good soccer school, and we're a very good basketball school. And it goes back to that measuring stick I said before, that it is our mission and hope and goal that every student athlete, when that season starts, when their first time they're on the court or the field or the deck or the track, that they know they have a legitimate shot to compete for a national championship, knowing full well that there's certain breaks that have to happen along the way, but it's the experience of pursuing that championship opportunity that's real important to us. And and we've been able to provide those kind of opportunities for our student-athletes uh, really for more than eight years, but the past eight years we've been validated as being the best of the best in the NAI. It's really a, an amazing feat. I mean, it's hard to win championships back-to-back years in sports, but to be able to put something together like this over eight years where you're in competition with hundreds of other schools and multiple sports, it, it's really, it, it's, it is, it's like, it is unprecedented. It's, it's kind of mind-boggling to think that you could do something like that. Well, every, every year that we win a cup, we award or give the student athletes of the year before, the, the student athletes who actually won the cup, we give them a T-shirt that says, you know, we've won the cup, you know, six years, five years, four years, eight years in a row. Last year's cup uh, T-shirt was uh, had on a quote from John Wood, and, um, and forgive me, I'm not going to quote it exactly, but uh, to win one championship takes talent, to win two takes character. And, and I, I really believe it that to win eight straight Directors Cups is a reflection upon the character of our coaching staff, reflection upon the character of our support staff from admissions and student financial services, people who work in ancillary positions but are very important in the development of our athletic program, that those are people of great character and work very hard to bring in the right student athletes that fit Azusa-specific both uh, athletically and academically and even spiritually that uh, they're able to thrive and compete at their best here. So it, it is hard, uh, but it's something we're just extremely proud of. And I, I know the people of Grand Canyon are proud of their accomplishment, and they're going to love it this year and going to just have a lot of fun with it. Um, I know Keith and I, uh, Keith Baker, the athletic director at Grand Canyon, and I will be in Dallas on Tuesday to uh, receive our respective uh, uh, Director's Cup uh crystal trophies and it's a pretty neat experience and uh i i know i'm i'm excited to be representing the zoo specific when we go back there for that honor is when you look at the transition and you look at everything that you've accomplished winning the the these cups and winning championships and and the history of being in in the conference that you were in and being in an NAI school was was there apprehension on part of some of the former athletes or alums looking at this transition we've heard that from other schools saying yeah, yeah. that people are like they don't want to change change is hard but was yeah. there some apprehension and how did you handle that I'll tell you what, I, we have been extremely blessed here. And the people of Azusa Pacific are just uh, just extraordinary people that I, I get to work with. I'm so happy I get to work with them. But Because well, I heard the same stories, and, and there were resistance at other schools. And, and I've heard lots of stories about that, people retiring, saying, I don't want to make this change, or people eventually having to move on because the change was too hard. When we first pulled our coaches about three years ago with this idea. Um, there was a there was a widespread acceptance across the board with our coaches. There were certainly questions they all had that they wanted to have answered, but to a person they said, Yeah, let's really look into this. And um, there was nobody who said, Oh, this is terrible. This is bad. No, we can't do this. And even there were there were a couple of coaches who said, hmm, "I really got to study this." And as they did, they joined in with the others. Who said, "This is a great thing." And to a person, we have 15 head coaches of 19 sports here at Azusa Pacific. To a person, those 15 head coaches are all very excited. They can't wait for August 8th when football reports and August 13th when soccer and cross country and volleyball report. And they can't wait for that first NCAA Division II contest and that first Pac West contest. They are very excited. As I said, like I said, one of our coaches was just here in the office about 15 minutes ago. He goes, I can't wait to, to play Division II and be in the Pac West. And yes, there have been 
there have been restrictions. Uh, some of the freedoms that we had in the NAI, we don't have in NCAA Division II anymore, and yet our coaches have embraced that. They have they said we need we need this structure. It's good for us. It helps hold us accountable, and they have welcomed that kind of structure. You know, the, the NCAA takes a lot of heat for the thickness of its uh, rule book. And, uh, and it is. There, there's a lot in there to try to understand and to know. But our coaches say, we need this. This is good for us. It, um, it uh, gives us more credibility as an athletic program because we're all playing by the same rules, the same book, and we're having to be held accountable to a higher standard. One of the things that I've said to faculty and staff here on campus is, really, this is like an accreditation process for our athletic program, and we're going to be an accredited athletic program when it's all said and done, this three-year membership process we're going through. And as we've gone through the first year, the coaches have come out and said, oh, this is great stuff. I like this. And you know, they're, they're having to pass uh, the NCAA rulebook uh, certification tests, and we just had one yesterday. We had about five more coaches pass it, and they were very proud of that. And uh, they come in saying, I, I'm understanding the NCAA rules, and I like them. They make sense, and this is why we need to do these things. And so there really has not been any resistance from our coaching staff in, in terms of the move. So I've been very blessed and fortunate in that sense. It's it's interesting you said that about the, the NCAA rule book and how thick it is because what a lot of people tend not to realize uh, those rules are are – Created by and voted upon by presidents, ads, uh, representatives from the institution. It's not like a bunch of people in the building that just make those up. It's all kind of the people. So when you look at that, what were what, what were you, some of the most difficult challenges when you were making the transition? What were the difficult challenges, or oh, were there any boy. for you guys? You know, there are obviously there, <laughs> there were. were there there were and there still are, and there's things we're having to work on. I think. The, the tradition of a zoo specific, and we have grown quite a bit. We were a school, 35 years ago, we were a school of about 1,000 students. Today we're, uh, we have a 52, an undergraduate enrollment of about 5,200. Total enrollment when you throw in our graduate program is just over 10,000. So wow. we have grown a lot over the last three decades. But 30 years ago, we were a school that had a lot of oral tradition. We passed down the reasons and the purposes of what we did through word of mouth. And as we've grown, we've been, in truth, we haven't kept pace with writing down our policies and procedures. And that, more than anything else, has been the greatest um, growth issue for us in this past year. We have to write down our policies and procedures. Um, for instance, uh, the NTA would say... Um, do you allow for Sunday play? We say no. Okay, show us where. Well, we don't have that anywhere. We we just know <laughs> we don't do that. We talk about, well, you need to have a policy. And that's, that's a simple one. Uh, but there have been a number of issues like that um, of how do you award your financial aid? How do you uh, distribute your uh, your scholarships? And how do you do your tryouts? And we say, well, we do them this way. Well, show us. Where is that written down? Well, you know, it's, it's not written down. So we have spent the past year uh, examining policies and putting into written word the, the purposes and the reasons for why we do what we do. And that's been been very good for us. It's been somewhat painful. Um, we've had to really examine ourselves in terms of the involvement of the campus in, into the athletic program from faculty and staff. And uh, the great thing about going in C2A, we have found that people are anxious to be a part of our athletic program and have said, how can I help? How can I be a part of it? And so we have embraced them and brought them in and said, okay, be a part of this committee or that committee and help us develop this policy or that procedure. And they've welcomed it and then said, great, let's do it. So uh, the greatest challenge this year, to sum it up, would be understanding why we do what we do, and then putting it in the policy. And now the NCAA is going to come in next March with a book in hand that says, okay, this is what a zoo specific says it does. We're going to watch them do it and see if they do do it. And that will be a challenge for us next year. We're going to have to uh, live up to the standard that we say we are, and um, they're going to test us on it. And that will be our our uh, gate to see if we can get into the third year and what would be our provisional year in terms of this membership process. The when you when you look at the transition and you look at the schools 
some of the other institutions that came into the Pac West at the same time as you did that you know the Fresno Pacifics the mm-hmm. Point Lomas holy names those did it help having other institutions going that you were familiar with and had competed yeah. against and were in a conference with were you able yeah. to kind of help each other yeah, kind of understand the process coming through oh wholeheartedly um I'm glad we have partners in this, and, and I'm so grateful that all of us are going into the Pac West. The Pac West is a terrific conference, and uh, and there was a time we probably all of us weren't on the same page in terms of what conference we were going to go into. Some of us were looking to CT2A, some of us were looking at the Pac West, some of us wondered, can we create our own conference? But at the end of the day, when we did all the examination, we said, let's go together, and as we've gone together, it's been a great partnership. Uh, Ethan Hamilton, the athletic director at Point Loma, he and I talk frequently in the evenings uh, as he's driving home to his house in San Diego, as I'm driving home uh, here in Laverne, California. We talk about what, what went on today at your place. What are you learning? What are you having to do? Can you help me with this? And it's been a great exchange. We do the same with Dennis Jansen, the athletic director at Fresno Pacific. And one of the things that's been real nice is California Baptist is a year ahead of us. And, uh, We'll talk to Micah Parker out at Cal Baptist and say, hey, we're experiencing this as our first year. How about you? And he'll smile and say, yeah, I remember doing that last year. And, and he will help guide us through some of these challenges uh, in terms of reports that we have to do for the NCAA or expectations in terms of recruiting and, and financial aid. And he's been a nice guidepost for us. And then ultimately uh, we'll go to either Jane, we'll oftentimes go to Jane Texera at the PacWest office and ask for her guidance and help. And there's a fine lady, Mo Eckroth, out at uh, Dixie State, uh, compli- their compliance officer, who just knows the rules really well. And every now and then we call Mo or, and or Jane for guidance. But the PacWest has been a great help, and to have partners in this uh, in this journey uh, has been a tremendous uh, aid for us as well. Yeah, Gary, we have a, we only have about a minute left, and it's, what will be your first? contest as a Division II institution? August 30th. Thursday, August 30th at 7 p.m. Football will be playing at UC Davis. Uh, that's the first day anyone can compete in the NCAA Division II, and uh, Davis called us, so we were supposed to play it on Saturday, and they, September 1st, they said, hey, let's move it over to Thursday, and we did, and so uh, that'll be the first game, and then that weekend, actually also that night, uh, our soccer teams will be playing out at Cal State Dominguez Hills out at the Home Depot Center uh, that night as well. So we'll have both soccer and football going that night. And then our first Pac West Conference, uh, I believe, is going to be about the second week of September, or maybe the third week of September in volleyball, and we're looking forward to that as well. Very excited about the coming coming season. It's an exciting time for Azusa Pacific and the Pac West. Mm-hmm. Gary, we appreciate you taking the time joining us, and uh, we look forward to talking to you, talking to you and your coaches throughout the year. Appreciate that. Thank you for the time. All right. Gary Pine, Athletic Director at Azusa Pacific University. Uh, Al, just uh, just uh, outside of Pasadena, outside of Los Angeles. And, uh, Joe, it's, uh, it's a, um, I hope your air conditioning gets all finally up and running. It sounds like you got it uh, pretty much set there. And then uh, next week um, we will have uh, a special guest taking over the show for me. We'll announce it later on uh, for that week. And then I'll be back in the studio on July 5th with Ethan Hamilton, the athletic director at Point Loma. For Wonderful. Backwest Radio, uh, Tom DiCamello for Joe Carrero. We'll talk to you next week. Thank you very much, Tom. All right, you're listening to KQCK Radio. I'm going to send you off to some sponsors. Hi, this is Daniel, your host for Rock and Roll 101, every other Sunday at 5 on KQCK. 